Hello, Ben. Can you hear me? Hello, Ben. Yes, I'm. I can hear. Hello, Roger. Yeah, yeah. Hi. Hello. Sorry, I'm trying. No, That's no, no problem. no problem. You, you. Uh, Alberto has joined. Yeah, Alberto is here. Uh, are Are you okay with your internet now, Roger? No, I'm traveling in a car. Okay, okay. I, I, I can be here. Uh, okay, which which link did you all join finally? Um, the one you posted. The one I sent. No, there was some problem with others with that link. So now I, I sent a new link. I, I understand Professor Kato has joined now. Yes, hello everyone. Uh, Raja, this link uh, was the working one. The, the previous one didn't work. I'm using the, the, the link with the 0910. So I sent the speakers and also Professor Kato this uh, new link that Raja provided. Let me. Uh, Kato Sensei is here. I'm inviting. Uh, her. Yeah. Yes, I'm inviting uh, everyone in the, um, in the audience. Can you please uh, in, send the link to Professor Kato again? I sent it. Oh, really? Yes. yes. So now I'm again. here. Okay. okay. But I, okay, I need a, I need a, a, a inform the, the Ukraine young doctors. I sent uh, the new link also you to them. It? Yes. Okay. Okay. Great. So we can so wait. Sorry, I'm traveling. Back. One of the speakers has joined us. I think in Ukraine. First. I see Dr. Andri. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Good evening. And I see also Dr. Virda, who joined. Professor Birzad. Good evening. Yes. Good evening. Hi, Harry. Ah, hello, Professor. Hello. Hi, hi, how Hi, how are you? Hi, 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 <laughs> Finally, we received the two uh, Ukraine doctors. Can oh, you wonderful. see their face? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I can see them. Yes. I, I wish can I could have me? been there. I speak in Russian, so I could have spoken with them. Can you hear? Oh, you speak yeah, Russian. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Please Russia, speak yes, Russian. Yes, yes. To them. Let's speak Russian. <laughs> Uh, how I understand. How I understand. Yes. Impressive, uh, Sachin. <laughs> I, Impressive. Think, I think you must be speaking most of the language because you traveled so much that you must be knowing <laughs> little, little of all of them. <laughs> this is a very little. Ochim Kusna. It's okay? Yeah. Ochim Kusna. is very, very, very tasty. <laughs> very, very important. Word. Yeah. But now they can understand Japanese. Iri oh, Sensei? Good. Yes? Oishi. Yes. Oishi. 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 So, yeah, Professor Ahmed Fawad uh, Pirzad is there. I just wanted to ask him that for the Uzbekistan conference, anybody coming from uh, Afghanistan? Uh, yeah, yes, thank you, Professor Sachin. Uh, we, we will discuss and uh, uh, arrange, uh, maybe uh, if we got the visa, uh, we will travel to uh, Uzbekistan. And okay, you know, okay. uh, it's uh, uh, 
Wir haben eine paar Embassy in Afghanistan, except Pakistan und Iran. But uh, Pakistan uh, visa is very difficult, but Iran is good, and we try to uh, find a way to get uh, Uzbekistan visa. If we got it, uh, we inshallah participate. And uh, uh, I told uh, to Dr. Uh, Delshat, uh, I will participate in China. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. So, this is everything fine? Hi, hi, everybody. Hi, hi, how are you? Is so everything awesome. fine? Nice to the, see the you. Congress preparation. Yes, Thank you very everything much. is fine. Yes, we are. Uh, preparation is going on. And uh, mm, everybody's sending uh, their flight details. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to meet them at the airport. Uh, mm -hmm and photos are reserved uh, and the venue is already ready. Uh, we're just uh, make, working on some technical uh, uh, sites of the uh, events for the online conference, preparing the links. Probably we are going to, there, there will be a separate four links because, because of the sessions which are going to be held in a separate four rooms, four, four halls. So uh, we, we prepare uh, several links uh, for the second day. And for the first day is uh, simple. We, we just hold a plenary session uh, on the first day with the workshop. And, uh, and the second day, there will be a conference with uh, different sessions, um, including neuro, neuro nursing session uh, and, and the live surgery also. So I have talked with Raja regarding this um, uh, specificities and uh, we're just working on it. And it will be, maybe tomorrow, <clears throat> we'll be uh, sharing the link. Thank you very much. So what what I'm saying say is ready to go. Yes, no, we're no, talking. No, 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 almost every day about the cases mm -hmm. for uh, live surgery. So what am I saying say is supposed to do the, some live surgery? Yes, uh, uh, we are preparing some pituitary uh, adenoma okay. uh, patient uh, for the live surgery. Okay, so they are preparing some instrument for live. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. What am I saying say and Ishikawa say? Go together. Ishikawa sensei, yes. And, Ishikawa and is there from Red Cross. A Red Cross. Oh. Yeah, Red Cross. Sachin was asking about uh, someone is coming from the Nagoya to. Uh, yes. So, the, I, I, so I, I already. Was, yes, yes. I already found out and uh, I spoke with them. So, no problem. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. Albert Sensei, thank you for waiting. Shono Sensei? I think we have Professor Shono now. Okay, okay. Line. Okay. I can see him. Shono Sensei, Konbanwa. Konbanwa, Konbanwa. Konbanwa, Professor Shono, welcome. Thank you. Okay, uh, sorry for uh, the delay. I think we can start. Uh, we have all the speakers uh, and we have Professor Kato and also uh, Harry, Harry Kiran, who is my co-moderator. So uh, we can start this uh, uh, this webinar. So, okay. so welcome uh, everyone to this uh, uh, new episode of this long journey of the Fujita Alumni Association uh, webinars. Uh, it's almost uh, three years we are running these webinars monthly. Uh, so uh, today we have uh, uh, two uh, speakers as uh, usual, and their talks uh, are uh, very, very interesting. At least the, the topic they choose uh, is uh, very intriguing. So I want to, first of all, uh, welcome, Professor Yoko Kato, who is uh, the mind behind these uh, webinars. 
uh, good morning, professor, or good afternoon. Mm -hmm. uh, good Japan. evening, good already, uh, seven cents. Already yeah. evening in Japan. <laughs> yeah. Buonasera, <laughs> buona 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 yes. Buonasera, yes. Uh, is it okay? Here Bonba. in Italy, is still uh, morning, Hi. so good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. So thank you very much for uh, Ireska. So uh, we are very much looking forward, uh, of course, the, the uh, expert speaker, the Shono Sensei from Tokyo University. Shono Sensei from Tokyo University. And also the uh, young doctors from Avila, who is uh, with us, uh, very good the fellows uh, at the at the Fujita right now. And today that we have uh, two more uh, additionally uh, the, from uh, Uzbek and uh, uh, Ukraine. So the, uh, we are so satisfied with their uh, uh, joining, Dr. Yuri and Dr. Andre. Maybe the later uh, the. Uh, Albert will introduce. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you, Professor Kato, for these uh, uh, welcoming words. Uh, you also introduced uh, uh, the other two uh, doctors we have today from Ukraine. We are very happy to have them, and we will talk with them later. Uh, I want to uh, welcome also my co-moderator uh, today, Dr. Hari Kiran. Hello, Hari. Uh, unmute, unmute, unmute yourself. Hello. Hello, Professor. Thank you. Thank you. Also. Okay. Thank you for uh, for joining. Thank you for being here. Uh, I think we can start uh, this uh, webinar. Let me introduce our first uh, speaker, Professor Naoyuki Shono, uh, who is uh, a professor at the Department of Neurosurgery at the Graduate School of Medicine at the University of Tokyo in Japan. Uh, professor uh, Shono uh, got his uh, education and training uh, mainly in Japan, in Tokyo, but uh, he also uh, went abroad for his education. He uh, spent uh, uh, three years uh, at the Department of Radiology and Neurosurgery at the Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, and he uh, got involved in uh, several research projects, uh, including surgical robotics, uh, surgical image guidance, uh, machine learning, uh, actually, he got his uh, postdoctoral research fellowship about uh, these topics. Uh, he published uh, several papers uh, in uh, peer-reviewed journals. He also uh, got two patents. So this is uh, the proof that uh, Professor Shono actually uh, has uh, great ideas, and we are really eager to uh, learn from him, especially because uh, he is going to talk about a very interesting topic, which is at the inflection point of computationally assisted neurosurgery. So I want to thank Professor Shono for uh, joining our webinars, and the floor is yours, Professor Shono. Uh, can you unmute yourself, please? Sorry. Um, thank you for your introduction. Uh... It is a distinct honor and privilege for me to have this opportunity today. Um, so let me start. Um, Can you see the um, screen? Yes. Yes, we okay. can see. OK, so um, let me start. Um, um, so uh, no COI. So uh, first, um, there are many ways to describe who I am. Um, from professional aspect, I am a neurosurgeon as well as a researcher. I consider myself as a, a general neurosurgeon with a moderate predilection toward um, microvascular decompression surgery and uh, aneurysm clipping surgery. Uh, as a researcher, I have wide variety of interest in the field utilizing technology, namely uh, virtual reality or uh, um, XR or uh, medical robotics or uh, machine learning, uh, surgical instruments development or uh, image analysis, etc. Et okay. Um, I'm supposed to talk about uh, uh, AI, and uh, um, 
the old all this memory that I have uh, regarding this AI comes from this movie. Uh, I don't know if uh, um, all of you know this, but uh, I think um, it's a masterpiece. Um, but uh, um, so the first impression of AI is like something being evil because uh, it's lower uh, human beings. And uh, the next thing that I rem um, that reminded me um, when I think of AI is uh, this uh, movie, and it's also um, uh, smash it. But um, so it also um, has some predilection to kill off human beings. Um, and okay, here it comes. Um, uh, this is AI, but um, I don't. I don't even know when uh, it uh, is taking place. But I guess um, they didn't kill off human beings um, at, with this um, movie. Okay, so um, I think I'm not going to talk about the history of AI here. And um, I, but I think um, what I wanted to um, emphasize here is that um, um, when we talk about AI. Um, uh, we tend to um, think of deep learning um, in the in reality. I, I think many of you intentionally, but um, maybe some of you not intentionally. But um, back in 2014, when I started my PhD course in my university, there was a huge impact with the arrival of deep learning. I was not quite sure if uh, deep learning meant that much at that time, but I. Uh, I can see why it was such a big, uh, big deal, and um, probably uh, why people call it AI. So, um, by looking at the definitions, old and new, um, and the first one is like 1955, and uh, it said that uh, uh, basically uh, the way of making intelligent machines. And then, uh, 30 years later, it's like um, kind of the same. But um, when you take a look at the newest one with uh, Google. Um, uh, according to Google definition, although um, deep learning um, was meant to uh, realize AI, but, but it's now defining AI um, as something deep learning can provide in a recursive manner. It's so, um, um, it's task-based, uh, it's like task-based um, definition. Yeah. So now deep learning is officially equal to AI, or is it? Uh, anyways, I'm going to talk about deep learning from now on. Um, these are the uh, mainstream tasks that uh, deep learning is pro proved to work. Um, natural language processing or computer vision, audio and speech signals and processing. Um, I think the natural language processing will be the king at this time, given the arrival of like chat GPT. Um, but there are many tasks that uh, you might recognize. So there are many potential use case scenarios with uh, regard to neurosurgery practice for sure. But because I am somewhat engaged in the field of, field of imaging, uh, I think I'm going to focus on these four case scenarios this time. The first one is uh, surgical simulation. This is a relatively simple use case, but um, it had a lot of impact on my personal experience. So I'm going to cover it first. So our team um, has been working on surgical simulation for quite a while now. Uh, mainstream of our surgical simulation has been built with the, this software called Aviso or Amira, uh, now acquired by uh, Thermos Fisher Scientific. Um, this software is a three-dimensional image processing software used in wide variety of field in science. Using this software, we built a um, multimodal three-dimensional fusion computer graphics models that has enough precision to be used in the context of uh, surgical simulation. Since then, uh, we have applied this technology to most of our open intervention cases. Uh, this te uh, technology was largely appreciated by many neurosurgeons at our facility. But um, we didn't actually stop there. So next, um, we took advantage of the computer graphics model data uh, that is exported from um, Aviso or Amira to process them in many ways. Um, this software called Maya was the one we used often. It is a software used to make computer graphics animation, like in movies, for example. 
So um, one such example is something like this. So we could uh, perform a uh, deform objects with this software to better simulate microsurgical corridors. Uh, in this case, uh, the aneurysm was uh, hiding behind Lyman easily. Also, we could uh, build three-dimensional models of surgical instruments with this software. So um, we could reproduce precise dimensions and also um, mechanical action. Although we were successful in broadening uh, what we can do, um, there was one critical issue. Yes, it took too much time. So we went on to develop our own software optimized for surgical simulation. So the name of the software is uh, GRID. And uh, this was developed in a large project and uh, obtained EMDA approval, uh, which is something like FDA approval in Japan. And uh, it's now commercially available in Japan. But um, before moving on, um, I need to give some explanation as to how we actually build these models. We need to co-register separately scanned images into one position. Uh, from which we re reconstruct uh, each anatomical structures. Like this uh, three, uh, 3D rotational angiography data uh, co-registered to uh, CAT scan data. Uh, this phase is called co-registration or just registration. Then we need to extract each anatomical target from each modality. Here we extract skull from CT data and the brain from MRI. Uh, this phase is called segmentation. So the key features of this uh, software grid uh, are as follows. And uh, automatic registration and uh, automatic segmentation and um, uh, various segmentation interface or um, surgical simulation. And uh, so in automatic segmentation, um, this was implemented using deep learning. So uh, segmentation is um, actually one of the major tasks in the category of uh, computer vision. So the software automatically extracts uh, anatomical targets such as cerebrum, brainstem, or uh, cerebellum, or a basal ganglia, and so on. The software um, would automatically do the segmentation for you. So within 10 minutes after you load the image data to the software, you have something like this. My favorite feature is that uh, it extracts temporal lobes separately. So this is a case of um, uh, uh, middle cerebral artery aneurysm. Okay, let's move on to the illustrative cases. Uh, the first one is the hemifacial spasm case. So in this case, um, the facial nerve uh, root is um, offended by the uh, anterior inferior um, cerebellar artery. And, uh, oh, sorry. So this is the actual um, screen that you will see with the software. And uh, so with the surgical simulation feature, you can uh, deform the um, cerebellum or anything, but um, so that uh, you can simulate the surgical corridor here. And uh, actually you, would, uh, you can see the um, compression site. And in this case, um, we thought that we need to um, actually move the vertebral artery first, and then um, the ICA. So um, we would know what to do when um, we actually do the exploration. So next one is going to be the trigeminal neuralgia. Uh, in this case, um, um, the trigeminal nerve root was uh, com um, compressed by the uh, superior cerebral artery. 
Similarly, um, we can do the simulation. And um, so you can deform the cerebellum to simulate the um, actual surgical corridor. And this is this was a relatively simple case, and then uh, you could trans uh, do the transposition against the um, tentorium. This is the case of the cerebral aneurysm flipping surgery. So uh, this is another feature for an uh, of the painting feature. So um, because it, uh, the temporal lobe is um, separately uh, segmented, you can um, do the uh, transsylvian approach easily. And this is the case of the middle cerebral artery aneurysm. And you can also um, put in the uh, clips. And um, so that you can um, see which clip to use um, before I, you um, do the actual surgery. So this is the um, ICT com uh, aneurysm case. Uh, it's a large aneurysm. And this is the um, APOM aneurysm. Okay. Moving on to the next topic, the robotics. So I used to work on snake-shaped robots, formerly known as uh, continuum robots. Uh, this one is designed to travel inside the ventricles. So um, and this is a continuum robot simulation I worked on. Um, I implemented the contact detection in this um, detection so that I thought it would uh, be useful for the design of the robot. Uh, because the brain seemed to not to be the best place to start from concerning the risks, I engaged in a project from, uh, for a robot that automatically guides itself to the esophagus. In this section, um, another example um, uh, is a task called uh, object detection. Uh, it's going to be used. Uh, by using it, uh, we can detect something on the screen. And um, uh, so I'm sorry for some kind of a deviation, but uh, you need, uh, we need to um, know um, what um, th these terms mean. And then, um, so this uh, person, um, uh, Dr. Joles, is um, one of the pioneers of uh, image guided therapy. And he, he's also a neurosurgeon. Um, and uh, uh, so we need to know um, what guidance means and uh, what control means. And according to him, um, guidance is knowing where you go and um, control is uh, knowing how you go. So um, in this case scenario, we need to go to esophagus and uh, avoid trachea. And the uh, first approach I, uh, we used is um, actually uh, guide and then control scheme. And uh, this is an um, example of uh, object detection by non-deep learning machine learning algorithm. Uh, this de detection did not seem to work when the um, object was uh, object rotated. So I made it to work with uh, four of them at the same time uh, with four different directions. So yeah, so we can see that this works for the most time. Um, but uh, sometimes it does not detect at all, which is a bummer. So in this case, um, you can see that uh, it doesn't work at all. So this kind of things happen. And uh, here comes the deep learning um, 
And uh, I clearly remember the time when I um, tried deep learning for object detection for the first time. Uh, it was very different from um, non-deep uh, learning, machine learning algorithms. Um, it was as if computer began to recognize the three-dimensional aspect of the contours. It was very different. So um, another approach actually is, um, uh, there is uh, another interesting approach. Um, uh, so guide and control at the same time. So uh, we, uh, I used a um, uh, platform called uh, Unity. And um, uh, so with this one, um, we could uh, implement uh, vision-based imitation learning. Uh, this is also a deep learning. And uh, so it's, uh, it's also an example of deep learning. So it, so it also um, does the controlling um, and it learns by itself. Um, so first you, um, I, on the, I have to show them how we uh, do the tasks, but um, then I would uh, uh, learn how to do the same thing. And basically they um, try to learn by itself and then uh, it takes some time, but uh, it reaches like 90% um, success rate after a while. Although this approach was really attractive since there was very few interventions required, um, but eventually it turned out to be too time consuming. And uh, we ditched this approach to use the first, more, um, the first one, the more simple object detection approach. So I started off with this robot uh, that can be controlled with uh, this video game controller. In fact, because of uh, COVID-19 lock lockdown at that time, I was forced to bring back the robot to my apartment to continue developing. Down the way, um, on the, the op the objective um, of the research has been shifted partially because of um, COVID-19 pandemic. And we went on to the automatic endotracheal integration, which is really similar. So, um, yeah. So we built a continuum robot uh, with uh, three degrees of freedom that can guide itself to the trachea by um, deep learning based uh, real time object detection. Uh, as shown in the uh, schematic drawing on the left, uh, the image acquired, acquired by the camera, uh, which the robot carries is uh, fed to the image detection computer. And this computer then sends the positional information to the, of the trachea. Uh, to the robot control computer, which uses the positional information to control the robot to the trachea. Uh, so um, I will talk about uh, this ROS, R-O-S, ROS, in a bit. Um, as for the uh, deep learning model, um, the model called uh, YOLO version 3, um, built on Keras uh, platform was adopted. And uh, th there were some tricks um, that I used in, in addition, but uh, uh, let's not talk about them. Um, so using, um, so um, ROS is um, a kind of um, uh, platform um, for the robot control, um, open, uh, open source platform. And uh, so it's kind of an operating system for robots. And, uh, so this is, um, I'm not gonna um, dig into details for this one, but uh, this was the kind of uh, uh, control states for the robot. So this is a setup of the experiment. Um, okay. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm not gonna dig deep uh, for this one, but um, so our proposed system could achieve a success rate of 96.7% uh, uh, with uh, deep learning uh, detection. So um, it basically traveled um, uh, uh, from the, uh, to go into the trachea uh, automatically. 
So I would I will show um uh, so the video in a bit, but uh, the success rate uh, with this deep learning detection um, was uh, comparable to the manual intubation procedure um, uh, for the physicians. So this is the um, the demonstration video uh, during the procedure. So um, you can see that um, the computer is detecting the uh, trachea, where the trachea is. And the robot is uh, controlling itself, although it's a little bit slow, but um, uh, it's actually moving on. And guiding itself um, to the trachea. So um, you will notice that uh, this is a, a phantom and uh, not a not an actual human, but um. At that time, um, so it was in a lockdown, so uh, we couldn't do um, that many uh, experiments with cadavers. And, uh, so yeah, it arrived into the trachea. So a lot of my, you might have saw, thought uh, quantum experiments would not prove any real world performance. The deep learning object detection can work equally well with a real world of objects. So in terms of, of uh, object detection, uh, please note that uh, this data is not published yet. Okay, so um, the object detection can be utilized in many other ways, uh, one of which would be detection of certain, certain uh, pathological targets like uh, cerebral aneurysms. And there are many studies trying to detect aneurysms from uh, CAT scans or MR images. A while ago, our affiliated, affiliated uh, group uh, made cerebral aneurysm data set. And uh, detecting aneurysm from uh, the reconstructed images, um, which is similar to detecting um, from surgical videos, uh, seemed interesting, so I tried out. Then uh, YOLO version 3 was uh, used. So I used uh, 89 aneurysms to be observed from six angles each and then um, fed them to the deep learning algorithm. And uh, this is the results. And um, yeah, it is true that uh, there are some limitations at present, but uh, with more data, I think it will be more accurate. And uh, a lot of similar case uh, use case scenarios will be available as well. Okay, moving on. So one more interesting application of deep learning uh, is this one, uh, AI-driven imaging. Although I am interested in this subject and uh, I was part of the co-authors, um, I'm really not sure if I can explain them um, properly. Uh, and uh, these slides are provided from um, Dr. Christian Parar. And, um, okay, okay. So I am not a, a MR physicist, so I would avoid any details and basically quote what was written on the paper. The, uh, the says, uh, this chemical exchange saturation transfer, CEST, is a certain way to make contrast in the, the uh, MR signals. The CEST contrast is attractive uh, since it, it is sensitive to metabolite concentrations. Um, and then when, when you think of uh, MR spectroscopy, um, uh, this CEST contrast has a higher spatial resolution and a short, shorter scan times. And the uh, major uh, CES signal depends um, on the chemical exchange rate, uh, which is pH sensitive. And uh, I think many of you know that um, uh, pathologies, including cancers, are characterized by uh, tissue hypoxia. And uh, that is leading to acidic microenvironment. So pH is very important. So, um, and then uh, another, uh, 
thing is coming on. And then, so the test uh, MR fingerprinting sequence um, has the following advantage over uh, conventional test. So it has um, tissue maps that are fully quantitative and the acquisition time is short and the data analysis is simplified. And uh, you can see that uh, you can um, identify the concentration and also the pH uh, of the uh, phantom here. However, um, this takes a lot of computation. So they apply the machine learning algorithm to overcome this. Um, and here is the um, deep learning networks uh, design here. And uh, we are hypothesizing that um, this can be used to visualize uh, the apoptotic status of the tumor after an oncolytic virus therapy or in many other situations. So they are working on clinical transfer of this technology as of now. Okay, the final one is um, image generation. This task is uh, notorious for uh, generating fake images. So uh, using deep learning models uh, known as pix to pix uh, I myself have tried to convert uh, two-dimensional image to three-dimensional image. And uh, also a uh, T2 weighted image to clear image in the past. Uh, this was fairly easy and I think it was effective. But uh, my exploration was kind of a pre-scientific approach. I borrowed um, some slides from our IMD PhD students uh, who graduated this March. Uh, I think this study is not formally published yet, so uh, please refrain from asking too much. So um, what we wanted to do was to synthesize uh, images without taking the actual images. And that can be used for uh, surgical simulation, especially uh, the ones that are invasive. So um, he used one of the transformer transformer um, algorithm, which is known for um, GPT-4. Uh, he used these metrics to evaluate the generated images. That is uh, this uh, structure, structural similarity in the SSIM and the peak signal to noise ratio PSM mode. So he, he also tried to do the segmentation with uh, generated images. And this is very interesting. He used uh, 97 cases in total, in total, uh, inclu including uh, training, validation, and uh, testing altogether. So um, this is a result. And the metrics was significantly better for the generated images. And to our surprise, um, the time needed to do the segmentation was smaller for the generated image, uh, which is a mystery as of now. So these are the segmentation results. Okay. So there are many potential applications for deep learning, not to mention AI. Um, with simple tasks, um, deep learning models began to outperform humans for sure. And there are certain tasks that uh, humans never even dream of that deep learning models can do. Although humans have uh, distinct advantages regarding the ability to stand by for numerous tasks at the same time with less energy consumption probably, in the state of art, uh, with the arrival of another breakthrough or two, to par parallelize uh, numerous tasks simultaneously, um, AI can truly surpass human beings, in my opinion. By that time, um, the way neurosurgeons work would be pretty different for sure. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much, Professor Shono, for this uh, very intriguing uh, presentation about deep learning and machine learning and artificial intelligence. Um, I think we can uh, open uh, the discussion now. So uh, if there are questions uh, from the audience, uh, I think Professor Shono would be happy to answer. Uh, maybe, okay, Harry. 
I oh. see you raised your hand. Uh, hello, Professor Sherna. Thank you for your uh, very impressive work and uh, intriguing talk. Uh, very new things. I just wanted to ask you two questions regarding uh, grid software. My first question is, is it available outside Japan for uh, commercial use? And my second question is, uh, you have showed the aneurysms. Uh, it was very nice that we can separate the temporal lobes. And uh, is it possible for any tumors that we can use this software? OK, thank you. Thank you for your question. Um, so uh, I think about this um, software called Grid. Uh, unfortunately, this software is um, uh, only available in Japan, although I think um, we are, um, I think in my personal opinion, I think we need to um, uh, offer this um, software to the outside Japan, um, but it's not um, moving right now. So I, I think I, I'm going to try. Um, so please wait uh, for uh, some period. And also, um, so um, for the, as for the, um, uh, so tumors, right? And, yep. um, and uh, so, yes, uh, it can be used for any um, uh, any kind of um, uh, cases, but uh, for the uh, like gliomas or um, like um, especially for the like um, low grade low grade gliomas, it will be kind of difficult um, sometimes. So it, um, it it's gonna be work. Uh, it's gonna work for the. Um, uh, normal uh, brain tissue, but uh, sometimes it, it's, it doesn't work as well for the um, uh, abnormal tissue. So um, uh, for the like um, uh, extra axial tumors, uh, it would work um, very well. Um, but um, for the intra axial tumors, uh, it doesn't work as well. Uh, we are working, working on it. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Shono. Uh, I also have a question. Uh, I have yeah. talked with uh, other colleagues uh, who are working on artificial intelligence, uh, deep learning, machine learning. Uh, and actually, I have uh, uh, seen presentations uh, about this kind of technology, mostly focused and related on education, which is a uh, great purpose, because uh, with this technology, we can improve education a lot. Uh, and also focused on uh, mainly uh, imaging processing. Uh, so nowadays, we can see there are softwares that are able to uh, do great segmentations of images, and detect um, meningioma or recurrences of tumors uh, and so on. So they can be a very uh, nice adjunct help uh, for, for example, radiologists in general. But in uh, your presentation, you showed also this uh, robotic part. So that is very interesting because this pushes the limit over. Um, it looks like... Uh, uh, in, in the future, we can have uh, some robots uh, performing some procedures, maybe not everything, but at least some procedures. You show the trachea uh, navigation, maybe in the future, some robots will be able to intubate patients. So my question is, uh, how do you foresee the future? You start your uh, presentation showing a masterpiece uh, by uh, Kubrick, uh, right? 2001 uh, Space Odyssey. So. Do you think in maybe 2101 uh, there would be a robot performing some uh, surgeries or uh, or procedures? And how do you think uh, the path will be to to go to that point? Okay, thank you for a um, very difficult question. And <laughs> I think um, so. Um, as for the intubation um, robot, I think it's already possible. Uh, it's only the matter of um, um, time and money and um, yeah, so workflows, work workload. So um, I think I, I did it myself. I think um, I was the only one working on it. <laughs> so um, if I can um, continue working on it, I, I think, and um, I could have some help from some people, then I think it is possible. 
and then so it's not future um, issue. <laughs> but uh, as for the um, um, uh, neurosurgery, it's a um, completely different uh, situation, I think. And then um, I used to work with um, um, robots that uh, perform microsurgery uh, in the University of Tokyo. And then um, that, that is uh, controlled by humans or neurosurgeons. So, um, and uh, I think it's also kind of possible um, not to uh, too far in the future. Um, but uh, the matter is the um, like, like the amount of money that you, we can put in. And um, so because the market um, uh, market size of the um, surgical robotics for the especially for the neurosurgery, it's not that big. So <laughs> I think there is a limit to the um, the amount of money that we can put in. And then so um, that's kind of the issue, and uh, unfortunately, but <laughs> I think if we can put um, infinite amount of money, it's not going to be that far away in the future. I think not, not like well, 100 years later. Um, so I think it's uh, how much we need and uh, how much we, we should um, uh, realize that's, that matters um, real, in reality. Thank you, Professor. Yes, actually, I also I agree uh, in the sense that uh, we we have to realize uh, what what is needed uh, for mm -hmm. neurosurgeons, right? What uh, is lacking right now, uh, and probably orient this kind of technology to uh, to fix what is not working perfectly uh, in our job in our surgeries. Uh, yes, yeah. Thank you. Is there... oh, Shono Sensei, thank you very much for your great lecture. It's uh, a you. bit uh, difficult for all of us, I think. Uh, and in, in the future, I think uh, that it's possible to superimpose of the such kinds of like, functional image for, for, for example, the bypass surgery uh, or ABM. So the before and after, the once uh, anastomosis has done, uh, how uh, improve of the perfusion, something like that. So uh, maybe the many of the many of us, which artery, which receive uh, receive receiver is the best for the uh, uh, bypass surgery on this case or something like that. So can you tell us about it? Okay, uh, thank you very much for the um, great question. Um, it is actually it is um, already possible to um, over uh, superimpose. Um, uh, functional images to the um, simulation. Um, so um, we can um, uh, theoretically we can do that um, as of now, but um, I, we don't really <laughs> use that um, uh, for future images uh, right now. But uh, I think we can think of um, doing that um, to choose which um, which recipient is the best. Uh, I, I think I'm going to ask Dr. Miyawaki. <laughs> we can, yeah. Okay, thank thanks you. so much. Thank you. Wonderful talk. Congratulations. Thank you. Is there any other question from the audience? So if there are no other questions, uh, I want to thank again Professor Shono for this wonderful lecture. Uh, really a glance uh, into the future, uh, which is uh, partially already here in the present. Uh, as he said, and uh, I kindly ask Professor Shano to uh, uh, stop the uh, screen sharing and yeah. to uh, Dr. Hira. Uh, Hari, uh, Hari, can you uh, introduce the next speaker? Yes, yes, <clears throat> Hello. Hello, everyone, and thank you, Professor Alberto, and good evening, Professor Kato. I am happy to introduce our second speaker, Dr. Krishna Kumar Vidya. He is a young neurosurgeon. He finished neurosurgery in 2020 from Gujarat, India. He is now working as a consultant neurosurgeon at Synergy Hospital, Rajkot, India. He is the current fellow in cerebrovascular surgery at Pujita Banten Hospital under Professor Kato. I wish you a great time in Nagoya. And uh, Dr. Krishna, the floor is here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like, uh, like to share my screen. I start my presentation.
is my screen visible yes yes uh, the topic is uh, regarding uh, uh, the initial use of the d clip and uh, i am very thankful to uh, professor kato uh, for uh, allowing me this opportunity there is no conflict of interest for this presentation i am uh, at uh, fujita health university bantane hospital for cerebrovascular fellowship it's located in nagoya city aichi the, it is have, having 370 bed 28 department and 688 of average outpatients per day and 329 per day in your uh, uh, average patients according to this article it was ranked number 4th for number of craniotomies for unruptured cerebral aneurysm and number 1 in tokai region according to this research this is a recent uh, photo of bantane hospital fellows and uh, staff so according to chart we can see there's increasing number of surgeries every year and open surgery was done 112 in last 2020 so there are three things in neurosurgery at present which is clipping microvascular decompression and endovascular techniques in uh, 2022 the number of cases of unruptured aneurysm was 124 so additional usage of endoscopy neuromonitoring and intraoperative fluorescent imaging icg makes it very safe and minimal invasiveness because it is not ruptured aneurysm unruptured aneurysm so features are small craniotomy cfd analysis preoperatively icg endoscopy and no retractors whichever the case is anterior or posterior circulation we can do with minimal invasive minimal craniotomies using aid of uh, icg and intraoperative endoscopy the flow the cfd computer flow dynamics shows us the preoperative assessment and intraoperative icg correlation with aneurysms icg endoscopy preoperative and postoperative icg and endoscopy while dissection there is no use of retractors which makes it safe and minimally invasive and not using any retractor while aneurysm clipping here we show an acom aneurysm which is clipped without using any continuous retractor dynamic retraction is done with suction and clip is applied post op icg post clipping icg showing complete occlusion and patency of vessels and perforator this is the d clip which i am about to present the there are 134 types six applicators the opening dimension is up to 21 mm closing force is up to 180 grams it is autoclavable length width thickness are as shown the length and width are smaller to the conventional clips and the thickness of head is a 40% larger only the thickness is larger than other company overall it is to be said to have lower profile the another characteristic is the gripping part is advantageous over the securing field of vision which we will see in next further slides as it is not like a conventional you can see its out bulging of applicator makes the restriction of field of vision particularly the impressiveness is of d clip is particular visibility around the forcep in improves the field of vision the clip looks rugged but it's thin clip is heavy at the head point and opening angle is better than yes sir gill clip the main areas which are 
mainly treated are we have started with peripheral aneurysms like mc aneurysm ic aneurysms and yet to be tried is vertebrobasilar and anterior communicating this was the first case with d clip 68 year female right mc aneurysm 7 mm of d clip was used preoperative endoscopy the cfd and we can see how wide it opens and the field of vision is not hampered by the bump of applicator's head the post op endoscopy this is another case of left mca bifurcation aneurysm where two d clip were used one was 7 mm straight and another was curved 4 mm first straight clip applied and the residual neck was clipped with curved no perforator at the end the residual neck was clipped with curved endoscopy after second clipping no perforator complete securing of vessel this is an case of 70 and female right m1 aneurysm cloud co uh, covered with two d clips oh, sorry one is d clip 7 mm straight and another is curved d clip yes you can see the clip one is d clip another is conventional sugita clip this is a case of rice distal right distal pica aneurysm where two clips were used 7 mm straight clip and curved 4 mm d clip for covering the residual neck the first clip applied the icg done retention of parent vessel the residual neck covered with curved clip both d clip icg retention of parent vessel this is a chart comparing d clip and sugita clip where visibility was same thickness of clip was little bit higher clip weight was bigger in d clip the opening angle was good in d clip the material and artifact are same material is titanium in both artifact is small in both this is the visibility we can see the applicator is having narrower tip so good visibility with d clip and in sugita there is a big head of the uh, applicator which hampers our field of vision the thickness of clip is bigger as seen in here the sugita is this and this is d clip it's less thicker the opening angle of d clip is very nice and in sugita clip it's very restricted so if it opens poorly we can't get a big fundus in it this is the clip applicator we can see this is shear straight and this is curved so makes a big bump in field of vision you can see the field of vision here straight away we can see the aneurysm here we have hampered 
vision with the clip applicator the slip the clip is less slippery sorry this is the artifact on the left side first is the d clip this is sugita clip and we can see artifact is very less in second this is d clip sorry this is sugita clip this is d clip and the artifact is also same i am very thankful to professor yago kato for allowing me this opportunity and thank you for your continuous support to the neurosurgery field this is in case if i have an extra time i can show right mca uh, bifurcation aneurysm small craniotomy sylvian dissection no use of retractors the aneurysm measuring the size the cfd intraoperative comparison with icg the endoscopy for confirmation and the 7 mm straight clip sorry and the residual neck covered with curved clip post clipping endoscopy the post clipping icg patency of parent vessel and no entangle of perforators final packing and closer thank you thank you dr virda for this nice presentation i think harry we can uh, open the discussion for uh, this presentation Yes, uh, thank you, Krishna, for the nice presentation on uh, initial D clips uh, experience. So, as far as uh, the presentation, I think the D clip is much better uh, than Sujita clip uh, in, in the in terms of uh, viewing angle of viewing. So angle, think, yes, angle view of viewing is good, and uh, the weight is a little bit less, and uh, other thing, the handle handle uh, is uh, lighter. Uh, and no. it's but the thing is it's uh, in initial phase and uh, after uh, many more cases we can uh, get per proper idea yeah. so uh, my i just wanted to ask you if there is any specific uh, condition or any situation where sujita clip is better than d clip in the past experience of the people no no and it is a comparative to both uh, each and every type of varieties are available so we can use any of them so if i may ask a question uh, i enjoyed your presentation uh, very much i currently i'm using uh, the lazic clip uh, which i don't know if it is available in japan and the, the concept is similar so uh, the vision is uh, much much better than the sugita or the yasa gel clip 
uh, they are very similar to this D clips. The difference is that the clip is grabbed not from outside the head of the clip, but from inside. So I would like to know if uh, uh, you have ever compared these D clips with the LASIK clips. I, I think so, because uh, the LASIK quiz is known as L clip. I think so. And the, uh, the same company makes this D clip, I think. The same com the, the same company. Ah, yes, L clip and D clip are um, uh, I think product of same because L clip you see the clip will be just similar to this. Yeah. The applicator works from inside it opens and in exactly. this it, it it's just like the conventional from outside we press and it opens. Yeah, but what's your opinion? Is there any real difference between the two these two clips uh, or? more or less the same advantages let's say i i have uh, not encountered any surgery with l clip okay but, uh, what i have seen online i think it's uh, just the uh, applicator and the uh, the way it opens and close i see it would be interesting to compare these uh, two yeah. different clips uh, which are both uh, develop developments uh, i think uh, uh, i would uh, have a hard time going back to Sugita clips and now that I'm using uh, Lazi clips. So it's a, it's a good uh, finding, I think. I don't know if uh, other colleagues in the audience uh, have a similar experience. Maybe Sean yes. Jose say? Jean 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 say any comment? Any comment? Because oh, you, yeah. have the, uh, you have an interest of the uh, clip. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you for the um, beautiful video. And uh, I was just curious um, um, about the variation of the blade design. Uh, so, um, yes. so is with the D clip, um, is the variation um, um, enough, uh, or um, is it um, more um, than the Sugita or Yasujiro clip clips? It's uh, as compared to the conventional Sugita and uh, Yasujiro clips. I think uh, the opening and closing pressure is same, but the opening angle is good. And the clip applicator's head gives us a good field of vision because of its small design. Other than um, that, uh, more cases, uh, if it comes out, then we can have a good uh, comparison and then we can give a final verdict, I think. Thank you. So, um. I was talking about the um the design of the blade, like uh, like penetration or um like the length of the um clip blade or um yes like the um uh, like um uh, like curved um, angle angle blade. angle curve yeah. yes it, it's yeah, a variation of, yes um, yes since uh, there are uh, one thirty four types of clip available with curved straight mini and uh, fenestrated every variants of uh, this uh, sugita and uh, uh, yasargil is available with d clip so we have uh, 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 yes 134 types are a good number i think we can have... yeah i think so yeah I, I think it's more than um, it might be more than uh, sugita or um, yasargil yes thank, thank you sachin Touching is yeah. Uh, Alberto, there is one person, Dr. Abhinash Datta, in the attendees. He wants to make some comment. He is written in the Q and A box. Maybe yes. he can make a comment, and after that, I'll ask my question. Sure, can you sure. promote him to panelist? Yes. So, Dr. Abhinash, can you hear us? You can talk. Yes. 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 I can uh, hear uh, all of you. Good evening, everyone. I am a new uh, fellow who has joined in uh, Fujita Health University under Professor Yoko Kato. Um, about the D clip and the L clip, the one that you are using is an L clip, like you said. The difference which uh, I feel between D clip and L clip is that the D clip uh, opens and closes just like a conventional clip. As in when you press it, it will open. And when you release it, it will uh, get engaged. So uh, that might be the difference between the L clip and the D clip. 
the hello am i audible yes yes, yes you are yes thank you for your yeah. comment so but ah, do you so, think uh, besides that is there any difference in uh, the cl clarity of vision uh, no the, the both the clips uh, yes 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 both the clips are um, uh, designed in such a way that they do not obstruct your uh, field of uh, vision during surgery but the l clip uh, because it goes from inside and opens so it is not uh, the same uh, tactile feedback that you get uh, when using a conventional clip so that to address that issue they have uh, designed the d clip which uh, you just uh, opens and closes like a conventional yes i was going through there i was going through the brochure of the company peter lesick micro surgical uh, innovations i was going through it so there they have mentioned that that is the basic difference between the l clip and the d clip thank you for this for this comment thank you so much thank you so much sachin you want to ask something yeah so i i want to share my personal experience i'm sorry for the noise so there's some festival going on in india so they are celebrating outside I, uh, so the question is i don't know whether all of you have experienced the same thing or not but uh, some maybe i have a little bit of uh, uh, maybe uh, adjustment uh, because we all got so used to with sugita clips uh, the problem i find with the d clip is if we are releasing the clip and if the clip stays in that direction then it's no problem for me but if i release the clip and the clip little bit takes an angle because the parent vessel has some angle and if it takes some turn and after that if i want to make some adjustment to the clip i am not able to negotiate my clip applicator into that uh, hook and uh, hold it i don't know maybe uh, somebody with uh, with some more experience maybe professor yoko kato or somebody or sensei can comment on this do, do you find the same difference or anything Yeah, Professor Kato is on the phone. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Sachin, you asked me something? Yeah. So the question is, I, I, I used, I try to use D-clip sometimes. The problem is oh. uh, with the D-clip, if we release the D-clip and if the clip stays in that direction, then it's okay. But if I release the clip mm -hmm. and the clip takes a little bit of angle because the parent vessel is in angle, so if the if the clip takes little bit angle after that if i want to change or modify the clip i am not able to uh, negotiate my clip applicator into the clip because that i am not able to hook it inside uh, mm. do you find the same problem or like yes, you are okay yes, with so that yeah 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 i had a several problem because sometimes when i release a clip some stuck it's it's a bit difficult to release sometimes and also the uh, clip application applicator is a bit heavy yes yes so maybe maybe uh, we used to it i think in, in the future but uh, uh, very nice uh, clips i think so the deeper part the clipping is um, uh, sometimes a bit problem i think for from this point of view maybe the lasik clip the l clip is uh, is better I, i've never used the d clip of course uh, i cannot compare directly but uh, talking about the problem sachin raised up i noticed with the, the l clip because they the, the l clip can grab the clip uh, with a wider surface on the tip so what i like also of this kind of clip is that i can uh, uh, grab the clip uh, irrespectively of the position of my applicator you know so there is a round tip on the, the applicator and any place can be any any uh, piece of surface of the, the applicator tip can be used to release the clip so i think this makes uh, uh, grabbing the, the the clip easier compared to to uh, to sugita but probably also compared to the clip i have never used that from uh, your experience such in i think uh, the l clip could be uh, easier in this sense
So uh, do we have uh, other questions from the audience for Dr. Krushna Virda? Hari? Yeah, uh, sorry, sorry if I missed, but uh, what is the full form of D in D clip? B. Actually, the um, uh, what I found online is uh, this Peter Lasek's uh, micro surgical innovation is there, and uh, this is uh, the the next uh, name for this. After L clip, they uh, named this as a D clip. That that's it. Yeah, so basically the only difference is what we mentioned. So the, the direction of grabbing the clip from mm -hmm. inside or from outside. Yes, yes. That's it. Okay, so thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Krushna Virda, for this nice presentation. I think uh, uh, this is has been a um, very nice innovation in uh, microsurgical clipping since uh, many years. Uh, we were familiar doing clipping uh, in the same way uh, for years, but this uh, is a very nice innovation. Thank you very much for sharing your experience. Um, Thank you. I see there are some questions from the oh, from uh, Dr. Daniel. Uh, he is writing, my question is, if Mizuo is the only one manufacturer that the Sugita clip or can be in the United States. Uh, I don't know who is the manufacturer. Oh, but he is talking about the Sugita clips. Oh, I have no idea how to reply. Maybe Professor Yoko Kato can reply. Yes, I, I don't know, but the Sugita company is just one. So mm. I don't know, maybe branch company, maybe. ショーの先生知ってますか？スギタクリップはアメリカにもありますか？マニュファクチュアー？Maybe、maybe、but、I'm not sure。いや、リスト、ジャパン、で、で、あの、ミズホイさん、マニュファクチュアリング、で、that's
an old city, near 750 years old. Uh, I finished the university, uh, which was uh, also in the same city, Lviv. This was also a very old university. Uh, it's from uh, 18th century. It's, um, there are a lot of also foreign students who come uh, to our city. Uh, after the resident, uh, after the uh, university, uh, I moved for three years uh, to my resident for uh, for residency of neurosurgery in our capital Kiev, because there are uh, there we have our institute. It is uh, named as Romadano Institute of Neurosurgery. There are eleven, I think, department different departments of neurosurgery, and um, as in Ukraine, our residency is not so long as it should be. Uh, it's only three years. So after uh, that, I uh, went to the fellowship in France uh, in uh, Pierre Verthime Hospital. There I was uh, one year in the general department uh, and uh, with professor um, uh, in general department. And then uh, one year in the endosco endoscopic uh, and school-based uh, department. After these two years, I uh, come back to uh, my native city and I work in the Lviv Emergency Hospital. It is the biggest hospital in the west part of Ukraine. Uh, there are all types of departments and uh, rehabilitation as well. And uh, in our hospital, there is uh, two departments on neurosurgery. It is divided on two. First, first is general and the second is the vascular. I'm working in the general department, and we have uh, near we have 50 beds and uh, 1,030 uh, surgeries per year we perform in that department. Uh, the main pathologies and type of surgery is uh, brain and spine tumors. We do them both, uh, with a microscope, endoscope, also a lot of uh, spine, sur uh, spine, uh, spine cases, spine surgery open percutaneous, minimal invasive, not yet endoscopy, but minimal invasive a lot. Also DVP, DVA, MVD, TVA uh, surgery. Uh, and also we have a lot of uh, patients with a trauma, this brain trauma, spine trauma, and peripheral nerve, nerve trauma. And uh, now during uh, last two years, during this war that we have, we have a lot of people, uh, patients who are um, civilians and uh, military military patients who come to our hospital uh, to all type of the surgery and rehabilitations as well. And now, thank you once more, Professor Vakato, for this opportunity to, to come to your, um, uh, uh, your department, your hospital, and to have a possibility to spend uh, not a lot, but even these three weeks, and and I would like uh, doing this uh, fellowship uh, to improve a little bit my microsurgical endoscopic technique uh, during open surgery, uh, also to watch uh, to, uh, how you chose uh, you you perform the choice of the best strategy of treatment in several cases. Also, how is all working in your department, in the neurosurgery department of Fujita Health University and then hospital? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Andre, for your uh, in self introduction and presentation. And uh, we can uh, uh, now uh, ask uh, Dr. Yuri uh, to introduce himself and say something. Uh, hello, dear colleagues. It's a very big pleasure for me to be uh, here with you and share uh, this uh, meeting. And uh, also, it's uh, nice to meet you, Alberto Faletti. And uh, also, thank you uh, to Sensei Avogato, Professor, uh, to be here and uh, uh, have uh, more knowledge with uh, such a uh, good uh, neurosurgeons in such a good uh, um, uh, neurosurgical department. 
So, so I will share my presentation. There is. Yeah. We can see. Oh, sorry. Yes, sir. Yes, it's okay. Yes, we can see. My name is how to My name is Yuri Fles. Uh, I am uh, from the same city as Andrew Andre uh, and the same from the same uh, neurosurgical department so uh, i was born in little uh, city near lviv with population 10000 people uh, then when i was going to uh, sorry have problem uh, then uh, when i was going to uh, medical university i was going to a uh, beautiful city uh, lviv from 2016 from 2016 i'm uh, go to sorry i have some problems uh, i was studying in uh, lviv medical university from 2010 to, to 2016 uh, then going to uh, to have residency of neurosurgery in the uh, capital of Ukraine, Kyiv, uh, from 2016-2019, and graduation, uh, and after this, uh, starting work in uh, Lviv um, Emergency Hospital, now it uh, it's, uh, have a name, St. Pantelimon Hospital, that include uh, uh, that include uh, 100 and 300 beds. Um, also, I am member of Euro European European Association of Neurosurgical Societies and member of Ukrainian uh, Association of Neurosurgeons. Last year, I was uh, in observership in Cincinnati, United States, in medical university. Um, This is our uh, department that includes uh, 15 neurosurgeons. It's uh, what do only open uh, surgeries. Uh, they said hospitals have 1,400 1, beds. And our neurosurgical department have 50 beds and we do uh, 1,300 surgeries per year. But uh, only for two years before we have uh, hospital by uh, new equipment such uh, such as neurosurgical uh, neurophysiology uh, monitoring uh, cusa microscope uh, uh, and because of this uh, that we started to do a lot of new for us uh, surgeries like uh, awake surgery and uh, more more surgeries with neuro monitoring uh, uh, and also now we have uh, a lot of patients like from uh, war for blast trauma military trauma and so th th now we uh, our hospital is big one of the biggest in ukraine uh, so we have a lot of work. That's why we, we are in Fujita Hospital for uh, only three weeks, but 
it's it will be very big experience for us and uh, opportunity thank you very much to to all of you thank you thank you dr uh, yuri uh thank you dr uh, andre for your uh, self introductions and presentations and i hope uh, this time uh, at fujita will be fruitful and useful for your career and also from a personal point of view as it was for me and for many others uh, before you and i also would like to uh, express my wish that the situation in ukraine uh, will change soon we uh, all uh, uh, pray for the end of this uh, war a uh, really crazy war inside Europe and for us Europeans uh, it was a real shock uh, I don't want to enter the many political uh, reasons uh, for this war I just want to say that uh, at the end uh, besides the reasons uh, for a war the the poor people and the simple people are those who are paying uh, the 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 much uh, from these uh, kind of situations so uh, really we hope uh, that everything will uh, end in a fair way soon and uh, in the meantime you are uh, very welcome to join uh, our uh, uh, association uh, so welcome to this family thank you for your support thank you so much so i think, I think, dr. Yeah. I think dr yuri do, do you have any other presentation uh sorry. Maybe next few minutes please yes we i have also one presentation uh okay please uh, it's good you That's see good. yeah one moment Uh, so I would like to present uh, a report, uh, report uh, endoscopic K-hole approach for cerebral point and angle of, of choroid plexus papilloma. Uh, since the beginning, neurosurgery has been evolving pro progressively. From early microscopic surgery, it became microscopic and more uh, precise in Gazi Zargil era. Then with the development of instruments and technologists, uh, it has been becoming more manually invasive over the years. After the invention of endoscope, it became endoscope assisted microscopic surgery. With the advancement of uh, magnetic resonance imaging and computer tomography, along with other investigations, also due to uh, awareness of the patients, pathologists are uh, being uh, diagnosed at, uh, at an early, earlier stage, with, uh, which can be done with endoscope alone. So uh, there is a silent uh, paradigm shift from microscopic to endoscopic era. Uh, here we are going to present a case of cerebellopontin angle choroid plexus papilloma, which uh, was removed with endoscope via retinoscopic K-hole uh, craniotomy. The patient have uh, only headache, and do MRI that we have seen uh, tumor that. Uh, Compressed brainstem, it's retinal sigmoid uh, K hole approach, dissection of uh, bone removal, dura, dura to me. So we open cistern. The here we can see the tumor. Now tumor debulking. Remove the tumor. We can see uh, we, we, we used uh, zero degrees endoscope. 
so it's very good view tumor removal that we have C pica use fusa and also remove the tumors and we used the 30 degree end of cope the bulking the tumor removal have a good view so that we have seen seven eight nine ten nerves and pica this is a small you see craniotomy two centimeters only and this is end of surgery The pre and, pre and post op um, imaging and uh, histology in Freud plexus papilloma. So, conclusions with the advancement of instrumentation technologies along with experience, endoscopic keyhole approach is becoming more popular. Along with other tumors, uh, cerebellum portin angle Freud plexus papilloma can also be removed safely with endoscope alone. It also takes shorter time. For this surgery, it was two and a half hours. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Yuri Fleece, for uh, this uh, very nice case you have uh, uh, shared with us. I think uh, we have uh, Sachin with a question. Please, Sachin. So, Covid plexus papilloma had only intraventricular, intralateral ventricular, and that one had a hydrocephalus. But this uh, CP angle Covid plexus papilloma, did patient had any hydrocephalus in this case? Oh, no. No plus one thing. And since it's a choroid plexus papilloma, the one I removed was very vascular, very, very vascular. But, the, but your sons is not very vascular. Did you embolize before the surgery? Uh, no, no, this is not what was vascular. No, no, not embolized. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, no problem. But anyway, the presentation, and I, I, I even like the uh, your both way of introduction, the way you did with the slides, I think uh, I think we should continue the session, Dr. Alberto. All the new uh, uh, fellows should introduce themselves in this fashion with a few PPTs so that we also understand uh, about their country's neurosurgery capacity. I think. like this idea. Yes, Sachin, I agree. I think uh, after the pandemic period, now uh, fellowship uh, activities uh, uh, started again at Fujita. And I think uh, this will be a good habit to have the new fellows to introduce themselves uh, and give a case presentation and uh, tell us about uh, where they come from and uh, some information on this. I think, Professor Kato, we can establish this uh, good habit. Yes, I think, so. I think so. Yeah. Though we can uh, know them uh, very details. Okay. Yeah. So uh, just a very short comment on this uh, last presentation. I uh, liked that very much uh, because I like endoscopy very much. So I really appreciated it. Uh, my only, I, you know, I use uh, the rigid endoscope in the skull base in the cerebellum pontine angle just to inspect at the very end of the surgery not to remove the tumor completely because uh, i i'm still uh, quite afraid of damaging uh, the many structures that are in the cp angle we have many nerves many vessels so to to do the entire surgery uh, is a bit scary for me because i i'm afraid of uh, hurting uh, uh, you know these uh, structures so probably uh, there is a need for a learning curve to uh, be able to to perform such surgeries uh, uh, with a complete uh, uh, neuroendoscopic uh, approach it was a really nice case thank you so thank you very much i think if uh, we are we have no other questions uh, uh, i can leave uh, uh, the floor to professor yoko kato for for some closing remarks 
Okay, thank you very much. So at the beginning, uh, the Dr. Shono Sensei, uh, thank you very much. So I think uh, it's a time to consider about such kind of AI or uh, IT, uh, very uh, advanced technique, uh, including robotics. So I, I think uh, uh, in that means is uh, Shono Sensei uh, uh, encourages very much. Uh, all the best okay. for your future career. Thank you very much. Maybe the Tokyo University is the top university in Japan. <clears throat> I think uh, uh, Shono Sensei will lead the such area uh, in the future. Thank you very much. And also, oh, the builder uh, <clears throat> talked a very nice uh, de clip uh, because uh, he uh, attended uh, all the uh, clipping surgery uh, when we had. I think he learned a lot about uh, uh, not only the clipping technique, but also the feature of the clip itself, I think. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Wilder. And also, arigatou uh, gozaimashita. <laughs> and also the two guys from Ukraine, that we are very proud of you, because uh, uh, even the very, the, the situation is not so nice, but I think uh, your uh, willingness to learn and to make friends, uh, I think uh, you can extend uh, the year, uh, I would say, <clears throat> the year, the study, and, not, and also the friendship. And uh, you uh, should enjoy the Japanese culture and the food, whatever you want here. So, uh, thank you very much for it. It was a nice uh, uh, alumni webinar. Ari sensei, arigatou gozaimashita. Aldo sensei, arigatou. Sachin sensei, arigatou. Thank you, Professor Kiko. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, so uh, thank you to our speakers. Uh, thank you uh, to my co-moderator, uh, Dr. Hari. And thank, uh, thanks to all uh, the people who attended and uh, uh, allowed for a very lively discussion today. Thank you very much and have a good uh, night or day, depending <laughs> on who you are, of course. Thank you very much. ありがとうございます。はい、おやすみなさい。はい、おやすみなさい。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。また頑張って。優勝先生。はい、ありがとうございました。優勝先生、優勝先生、来てください。おやすみなさい。Thank you. あり